I told you that this biggest surah of the Quran and the greatest surah as well, according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the kulli shayin sinamun wa sinamul Quran is surah al-Baqarah. Everything has a top, and the top of the Quran is surah al-Baqarah. It can be divided into two parts, nearly equal parts. In the first part, the address is basically to the former Muslim Ummah, that is Bani Israel. In the second part, the address is totally to the Muslim Ummah, present Muslim Ummah, that is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first part comprises of 18 sections and 152 ayat, while the second part consists of 22 sections but the number of ayat is 134. The first half then can be divided into three parts. The first four sections, they are preliminary. And I told you, it can be said that they contain a summary and gist of the whole of the Makki Quran, which was revealed before Surah Al-Baqarah. Two-thirds of the Quran is Makki, and Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed at Medina. So actually two-thirds of the Qur'an had already been revealed. So a gist and summary of that has been placed in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Then ten sections consist of direct address, Ya Bani Israel, Ya Bani Israel, Ya Ahl Al-Kitab. This is the direct address to the former Muslim Ummah, that is Bani Israel. Then the four next sections, they may be called Tahwili because the change of the direction of the Qibla in the prayer, which was a symbol of the change of the Ummah, that the former Muslim Ummah was deposed from that position which it occupied for 2,000 long years. And the new Muslim Ummah, that is the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is taking that place, is being installed in that position. Now the first four rukus also, although I told you that they are preliminary and they contain a gist and summary of the Makki Qur'an, but we find references to the Jews in those four sections also. For example, you must be remembering that the second section that is applicable equally to the Munafiqeen as well as the Jews. In the fourth section again, that we find in the story of Iblis and Adam, a very subtle resemblance has been given that the attitude of the Jews of Medina towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the same as was the attitude of Iblis, Shaitan, towards Adam alayhi salatu wasallam. Because he also refused to prostrate before Adam alayhi salatu wasallam. Out of jealousy. There was no other reason. Out of his pride, because he was proud of himself. And he was jealous of Adam alayhi salatu wasallam. He didn't bow down as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. The same was the case of the Jews. They recognized Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all right. They recognized him. Yarifunahu kama yarifun abnahum. This ayah we shall read today. But they didn't accept him, didn't believe in him. And that was also absolutely out of jealousy, sheer jealousy and nothing else. So there are subtle references towards Jews in those four sections also. Then, you know, the address to the former Muslim Ummah, I told you, there must be made a very clear distinction that the first section, that is the fifth one, comprising of seven ayat, this consists of an invitation to the former Muslim Ummah to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati alamtu alaykum wa awfu bi ahdi ufi bi ahdikum wa yaya farhaboon وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لُبَا مَعَكُمْ وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَا كَافِرٍ بِهِ وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ سَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَإِيَّا فَرْحَبُونَ From the next, that is the sixth section, now it's a very long charge sheet against the former Muslim Ummah that we are still studying. But while we are studying this charge sheet, one point must be kept in view. It is a charge sheet against the former Muslim Ummah but it is also simultaneously a forewarning for the Muslim Ummah, for the new Muslim Ummah, the Ummah of Muhammad These were the wrong 
paths which were treaded by the former Muslim Ummah. They committed these mistakes. They went astray in such and such ways. Lest you should also, O oh Muslims, O oh Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lest you should also follow the same path. You may go in their footsteps. So it was a forewarning to the Muslim Ummah. And let me quote here a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He once said, to the companions, رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين, لتتبعون سننا من كان قبلكم. You will definitely follow in the footsteps of the former Muslim Ummah who were before you. قيدا شبرين بشبرين بيادن بيادن. Equally, each hand in place of a hand and each arm in place of an arm. It's, you know, a sort of muhavara a usage in, in Arabic language to show the similarity of something, you will be following absolutely, completely the, the people who were before you. And if they entered the hole of a, of a desert lizard, you will also enter it. And if there was someone from among the former Muslims who committed adultery with his mother, someone must be within you also who will do the same. Now the companions, you know, they were astonished and they asked, Whom do you mean of Prophet ﷺ? A Yahud wa Nasara? And he replied, Who else? You will follow in the footsteps of the Jews and the Christians. So actually we should see and we should read between the lines that the same things happen to the Muslims. The same wishful thinking. We are the blessed people because we are the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu We must be saved. We cannot be kept in the fire of hell for, 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 for all times to come, for eternity. All these things, you know, this, the same wishful thinking. And let me quote here the ayah that comes in the end of the seventh section. Actually, this ayah is applicable to us today. And practically it is not applicable to the Jews of today. Zoribat alayhimu zillatu wal maskanatu wa ba'u bi ghadabi min Allah. Humiliation was heaped upon them. And they, they got the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were punished like anything. Are the Jews today getting the wrath of Allah? Are they humiliated in the world? They are controlling the sole supreme power on earth. The policies of the sole supreme power of earth is in the hands of the Jews, the Zionists. They are controlling the economy of the whole of the globe. Only about 14 or 15, 15 million people. But you know the influence they have, how much authority they command in the whole of the world. While we, although we are more than a billion, but what's the condition? Humiliation. No say in the international affairs. Nobody concerns us. Zoribat alayhimu zillatu wal maskalatu wa ba'u bi ghadabi min Allah. These words depict the real condition of the Muslim Ummah today, not of the former Muslim Ummah. In the same way we read, you know, the last ayah that we studied last night, that people think that we cannot, this, the, Fire of hell will not touch us, save for a few days. Now these are the same, you know, dogmas and aqidas that we have today. Because we are born Muslims, because we say kalma, so we shall anyhow be rescued and we shall be taken out. Even if we are thrown in the hell, we will be taken out. Although a part of this is correct. If somebody has real iman, real faith, conviction in the heart, it is the agreed upon article of faith among the Muslims, all the sects of Muslims, that at one time he will take her out from the hell. But that also, the, to the person who has a real faith, not just a verbal attestation. The verbal attestation was done by the Bunafiqeen of Medina. They also said the Shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And Quran says that they will dwell in the fire of hell forever. Inna al-munafiqeen fi al-darki dasfari bin al-nar. 
So these are all things which we should understand. And now 